Okay, so we're gonna work on claiming personal space. And because Lola really likes this uh, nylophone, we're gonna use this. So when a dog claims something, it typically will put it between its feet. So Lola. All right, so I'm gonna have you show, hold it up, and then just go ahead and drop it between your feet, and you're gonna hiss before she gets to you. There you go. Now lean back. Just because it's there on the floor between your feet doesn't mean she has permission to come and get it. So you don't necessarily have to be guarding the whole time. Um, so she's looking, waiting for you to give her command. I would put your uh, hand down. There you go. And don't necessarily look at her. See her, but don't stare at her. Um, and so you know, this is something where we can do it with anything that she likes, any of her uh, toys that she's allowed to have, or even things that just grab her attention that she's not necessarily allowed to have. Um, but by putting it underneath there, this is, I mean, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of uh, artificially creating this situation. What I would normally do is like, I understand this isn't the main hangout room, but you have a table here with, you have a little bit of a gauntlet between this couch and the table and then here. So I would make this area, Lola, uh, kind of off limits unless you invite her in. She, how many times does she come and kind of like shove herself here? So when she shoves herself in, that's being physical. And again, because you have a little one over there, we want to make sure that Lola doesn't think that she can overpower. So respecting personal space is important. So by just simply doing putting a bone down there or even a high value treat or something, and then leaning back, and but you have to do this when you're paying attention. Lola. A lot of times what'll happen is you'll get distracted with your daughter or something like that, and the Lola. dog comes over and steals something. Lola. So she looked at it, but she didn't take it. Um, so now that, that was okay because she came in and she didn't bump into anyone or shove them herself in. Go ahead and pick it up and kind of just drop it again. Oh. There you go. Now you kind of went, you were kind of cautious and then drop, just dropped at the end. That's fine. But you also kind of held it out for her. And that's kind of a little confusing. So I usually use a down orientation when I'm just putting something down. And I don't hold it this way because that's confusing for the dog thinking that it's for her. Uh, but I mean, she's still looking at you, she's waiting. So now go ahead and reach over and tap the floor. Uh, t like two or three times. There you go. No, no, you're giving her permission to have it. This is, so this is different. So go ahead and tap again. Tap the bone. There you go. So you gave her permission to come and take it. So we want to, you know, there are times where she's not allowed to get allowed to come in there. There's times where you do allow her to come in, but she needs to see that it's when you guys make the decision, not when she makes the decision. So claiming your personal space will also help with her. If she's on the floor and Lola comes up and comes near Sam, well, as she approaches Sam, I usually like to see if the child's on the floor, I usually look for about a three foot bubble. So if... Now, if she wants to come up, it's no big deal, and you don't have a problem, and she's not stealing the baby's toys, that's fine. But if you want to establish a boundary, let's say she's eating some crackers, mm -hmm. then Lola's not allowed to come within three feet of her. So if she approaches three feet, she's outside the three-foot zone, but she's heading there, then I hiss. Once the dog crosses the three-foot zone, then I would immediately stand up. And then if it continues, then I march, get in between the baby and the dog. So my back is to the dog, and I march towards the dog until the dog gets outside of that three-foot zone. Back towards the dog or back towards the baby? Towards the, you're gonna put your back to the baby and walk towards oh, the dog okay. until the dog gets outside the three foot boundary. Imagine okay. there's a circle of three feet around the, the baby or the t dinner table or a diaper that's laying on the floor, whatever it is, you mentioned the trash can, she gets in the trash can. What I do instead of getting a new trash can is I put the trash can in the middle of the living room floor in between me and the TV and watch TV. And I put something really stinky in it that the dog really wants. The dog shows interest and sniffs, then I uh, hiss. Unless it's, you know, if it's beyond, you know, if it's several feet away, that's fine. But once it starts approaching that three foot line, I hiss. If it continues, I stand up, get between them and the object, and I move the dog away. This way I'm communicating the person's to be left alone. The food is to be left alone. The trash is to be left alone. Other, if we just move it or change the trash can, we're not teaching the dog anything. We're just making it more challenging. They have, she's just like, I'll have to wait until I catch the, the, uh, the trash can open, and then I can get in there. But if we put it and give dog full access, and disagree with good timing a certain amount of times, then the dog understands I'm not allowed to go in that trash can. Now, every dog's magic number is different. You know, her magic number might be 27. Might have to get her 27 times in a row when she tries to get in there or we disagree. And then she just is like, well, I'm not allowed to go in there. Some dogs pick it up faster than others. 
So giving the dog access when you have time. You guys are parents. You have a young one on the way. You already have a young one here. So you don't always have time to give your dog your full attention. But there are no entrapment laws for dogs. So set her rear end up. So if there's something like a shoe or a particular toy that she likes to get into, the baby's asleep, you have time to pay attention, toss it in the middle, just toss it in the middle of the living room floor and say sitting on the couch and just establish that three foot boundary around it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that way you're actually communicating this is to be left alone as opposed to just getting frustrated when we just don't want the dog to do it but we don't actually communicate it's to be left alone. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right.